interest rate risk management interest rate today is five percent and you want to take a loan in six months time in six months time it's possible that the interest rates will have gone up so what are you doing now what are you doing to hedge against a rise in interest rates does it make sense that's what interest rate risk management is all about so companies can take loan as fixed interest or floating interest right this is the risk profile floating interest or variable interest now when a company takes a loan with fixed interest it means interest rates have a possibility of going up so it's preferable to just take a loan with a fixed interest rate like a five percent when they take floating it's always based on the libor rate or the nibor rate london interbank rates okay so the libor rate or the nibor they will give you like that in question so they can say it's plus 0.5 percent or plus 0.8 percent i'm just giving you an example of what fixed interest and variable interest looks like okay companies need to protect possibility of an increase in interest rate because when interest rate increases it's a loss to the company now you have to pay more interest so that's where edging against a rise in interest rate comes in and what can you do you can use the external method or internal method so all those um, um forward rate agreements interest rate guarantee that's where um, it comes on that external method then the internal method you have pulling matching smoothing now under the external method you have your forward rate agreements that what they call fra right we have interest rate guarantee we have interest rate swap interest rate futures options on interest rate futures right so in this class we're going to focus on these three and in the next class we'll do this last two so let's start with forward rate agreement how do you use forward rate agreement to edge against a rise in interest rates is by simply agreeing a rate today okay you find out that interest rate is five percent you agree that rate today that in six months time i want to take a loan because the only time you have to manage the interest rate is between today when you're not taking the loan and the start of you taking the loan but once you take the loan you have to follow the t and c the terms and conditions right so you can do forward rate agreements today and that's bought over the counter right you just go to the bank and you say you want to agree to an interest rate of five percent okay and in six months time you want to start a loan so in the question you might say something like three versus nine what does this mean it means that the loan is going to start in three months time and to end in nine months time it means the loan is for what six months when we are solving questions it's something like three versus nine okay and you can see two rates you can say um a fra of three versus nine the rate is what 5.2 percent to 6.3 percent you pick the higher rate because this higher rate relates to borrowing and this lower rate relates to investment okay because you can hedge against rising interest rates and also edge against your investments like falling investment rates do you understand so fra is a method that allows the customer to agree a rate today that in the future it, it is going to transact at that interest rate okay so two things can either happen let's say you agree at six percent let's do an um example let's say the customer agrees that the rate the fra rate okay future rate that you agree today that you transact at tomorrow is six percent and then by in the future the libor is now say eight percent you can see that it has gone higher right but because they've agreed at this rate the compensation will come from the bank so this one will give rise to a two percent compensation from the bank right because the customer has agreed at this rate this is very simple but you just need to know it because if you don't know it you don't know it right if there is a fra of six percent just like this i'm trying to create another scenario and you have the future rate at maybe four percent let's say it went low you can see that there's a compensation of two percent from who from the customer not from the bank this time because this is what we agreed so even if it is happening at four percent the agreement must stand okay so that's what um future rate agreement is all about now let's solve one question on future rate agreement let's solve one example as you have on the screen jaja limited will have to borrow an amount of 50 million in three months time for a period of six months the company borrows at LIBOR plus 50 basis points. LIBOR is currently 3.5%. The treasurer wishes to protect the short-term investment from adverse movement in interest rates by using FRA. 
then they gave you the frap prices you can see frap prices in percentage three versus nine four versus nine five versus nine then they said a determine the fra interest rate applicable and what will be the effective interest rate if LIBOR increases by 0.5% and if LIBOR decreases by 0.5%. They gave you a lot of interest, 3 versus 9, 4 versus 9, 5 versus 9. Which one are you going to select? You're going to select 3 versus 9 because they said the company will borrow an amount in 3 months time. And I told you, when you have something like this, 3 versus 9, this means 3 months to when the loan will start. And this means the end, right? So if you have 3 months to when something will start, and then nine months to the end it means that in between you have what six months and they said it here that the loan is for a period of six months so you just know that the um interest applicable is the one um attached to three versus nine not four versus nine or five versus nine and the interest rate applicable that is the friday they will pick the amount we are agreeing today you see they said 3.85 percent to 3.8 percent you're picking the higher okay so that's 3.85 percent so your answer will be the a part you don't need too much explanations in the A part. Just say A, the, what did they say? The FRA interest applicable is equal to 3.85%. That is 3 versus 9, right? So 3.85%. Then the second part of the question says, what will be the effective interest rate? B. Effective interest rate means, what will now be the interest rate at the end of the day? What will now be the eventual interest rate that this company, Jaja Limited, would pay? Because they are agreeing 3.85 today. That in the future, 3.85 is what I want to pay. Okay? Irrespective of what is happening. But they are telling you that what will be the effective interest rate if LIBOR increases by 0.5%. So let's do the analogy that I did earlier when I was explaining it. Okay? The FRA, what they are agreeing today. Don't forget that this is the first scenario. If LIBOR increases, Abi. LIBOR increase by 0.5%. So the FRA that they are agreeing on is what? 3.85. Then LIBOR. LIBOR is currently 3.5%. So 3.5% plus 0.5%, 4.0%. You are comparing that against 3.85%. Can you see that what we agreed, what the company, Jaja Limited, had agreed is lower than this? So it's, it looks kind of protected. Abby. It looks as if the compensation is going to come from the bank. Because what happens practically is that Jaja will still pay this 4.0% in six months' time. As in when the loan starts, it will still pay this 4.0%. But because he has agreed 3.85, there will be a compensation from the bank. Okay? So the compensation from the bank is what? 0.15% when you deduct it, right? So this is compensation from the bank. But that's not what they're asking you for. That's too simple. Compensation from the bank. So you now go and describe the scenario that will happen once the loan is collected, right? So on the actualization of the loan, it's not compulsory, I'm just writing that. On the actualization of the loan, what's going to happen? They'll pay interest rate. So interest payment, interest payment, that's what, 4.0% plus 0.5%. Why are you adding 0.5%? Because the question says the company can borrow at LIBOR plus 50 basis points. At any point in time where this company wants to borrow, it has to borrow at LIBOR plus 50 basis points. And you, you guys now have explained that in... Um, is it cost of debt? Because whenever you see basis points, 50 basis points, just put 50 divided by 100 and you put your percentage besides. If anybody gives you 70 basis points, write the 70 divided by 100 and put percentage beside it. So that's 0.7%. You see? 0.5%. Okay? So interest payments, 4% plus 0.5%. Because the company must borrow at the LIBOR rate plus 0.5%. And the LIBOR rate is this. Not this 0.5% you are seeing, though. No. This one was just the increase, okay? This was the increase in LIBOR rates. Because LIBOR rate today is this. The company saw that LIBOR rate today is 3.5. Then they quickly agreed down that, let's say in six months' time, no matter what is happening to LIBOR, I'm borrowing at 3.85%. The, the bank agreed, okay? Then in that six months' time, interest rate has gone so high to 4.0%, higher than what they agreed. It means that the bank will compensate them. But then they said in the question, that any, at any time the company wants to borrow, it would only borrow at LIBOR, plus 0.5 percent it could be 0.6 it could be so don't think these two are the same does it make sense so it says they are paying interest at 4.5 percent right is equal to what 4.5 percent multiplied by what's the loan amount 50 million right 50 million naira now the loan is for six months okay so you have to write six 
over 12 because it's not a year this is an annual rate all these rates are annual so you need to prorate okay yeah and i just actually saying if 4.5 percent is equal to 12 months so how many percent will be equal to six months okay so that percentage that is equal to six months will be what 4.5 times 6 over 12. can you see where the prorating comes from multiplied by 6 over 12. so like you are dividing this one into two that's what it means technically okay so you need to prorate so it means that the interest where's my calculator 4.5 percent 0 0.045 multiplied by 50 million divided by 2. So that will give us 1,125,000. Can you see that? Now, there's a compensation from the bank. Because you paid this, does not mean that the bank will not compensate you. Okay? So you have compensation from the bank. And that was 0.15%, right? Multiplied by 50 million, multiplied by 6 over 12. So that's 0.15 multiplied by 50 divided by 2, that's 7,500. So this 7,500 is going to be a negative. You know why it's a negative? You are using it to reduce the amount of interest you're paying. If you had put this interest in negative, right, as if you are paying the interest, then you leave this one in positive so you can get the net amount, okay? So what I'm saying is that this is the interest you're paying. Then this compensation from the bank, it will reduce it. That's why you're putting it in. Um, bracket so that you can show that it's reducing it. Then you now deduct that one one two five zero 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 minus seven five hundred, and this will give you one zero eight seven five hundred. This is the effective interest. This is the effective interest being paid. Okay, we paid this, but there's a compensation from the bank based on our fra, and then this is the effective interest. Now you're now to calculate the effective interest rate. So effective interest rate is equal to what interest amount over loan amount. It makes sense now. Interest amount is 1087500 zero divided by 50 million multiplied by 12 over 6. Do you understand? Why are you multiplying by 12 over 6? You are taking it back to an annual rate. Do you understand? Because if you don't put multiply by 12 over 6, let's say you take it out, you have just this over this. It's going to give you a monthly rate. And when it gives you that monthly rate, just know that it is 6 months rate. But by the time you want to get it to 12 months rate, it's going to be that 6 months rate. You cross multiply that six months is multiplied by 12 months over six months that's why you have times 12 over six here okay so this is just a longer explanation what i did here so i know why i'm doing times 12 over six i've taken it back to annual so you put this in your calculator one zero eight seven five hundred divided by 50 million times 12 divided by six right and that gives you 0 0.0435 is that so you multiply by 100 to get the same percentage. That's 4.35%. Okay? So the effective interest rate is 4.35%. Why is it 4.35? The company agreed 3.85. Okay? But look at, upon loan actualization, it was paying interest as 4.5. Thank God for that 0 0.15, um, what was it called? Compensation. If you do it from here, 4.5 minus 0 0.15, you get 4.35. Okay? But you don't get to do it, do the long way, so you can actually see what is happening does that make sense so let's move right to the second method okay so the second method is the um interest rate guarantee that one kind of um addresses the weakness in the first method you know in this method there's no flexibility at all once you've agreed you've agreed irrespective of what happens somebody has to compensate is that there's compensation from the bank or there's compensation from the customer but the interest rate guarantee is like an option in fact, that's the name. It's an over-the-counter option, right? It's an option. I know option is that thing that you have that gives you the right, but not the obligation, to exercise an action either to buy or sell at the transaction date. Check online for the definition of option. But I'm just trying to explain it because I'm not giving you like a structured definition. So that interest rate guarantee it gives you a guarantee because you pay a premium. So there's premium payments in this. So the second method is the interest rate guarantee method. Before we solve this question, let me just explain again. So the interest rate guarantee, I'm going to explain with two scenarios, okay? Scenario one and scenario two.